Okay, so hello and welcome to a new series on the channel. In this series, we're going to be creating a website over the course of many episodes. In this first episode, we're going to be showing you how to set up Blazor, the framework we're going to be using on top of Microsoft's.net. And we're going to be coding in C Sharp for this. So the website logic is in C Sharp. We're going to be using a bit of HTML. Um, probably won't be using much JavaScript. That's what we're going to be using C Sharp for as a replacement of JavaScript where you would normally use it. And then we're also going to be uh, using a bit of CSS, you know, just simple web stuff, but primarily focused on C Sharp to write the website logic. So this video, we're just going to be setting up the project. I'll show you how to set it up. I'll, you know, tell you all about the GitHub repository so you can stay up to date with that. And we'll look a bit through the sample uh, template code they give us and expl I'll explain to you how it works. And then in the next video onwards, we'll actually start writing our own custom logic and, you know, getting some websites up and running. But of course, first, before we get into that, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If no one else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my patrons down below. If not, there are also links down below to social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the website. Okay, so here is the Blazor website. It's part of Microsoft. Obviously, it uses C Sharp, which Microsoft developed. Uh, it's all open source Blazor, actually, and it's, you know, uh, developed on by the community, too. It's not just internal Microsoft developers. Uh, you can read a lot about it here. I'm not going to spend the entire video just reading off this website. You can go read it yourself. I'll link it down below. The get started thing also really helps because it explains the template code that I'm going to go through. It, it explains it themselves. Um, and it also explains how you might want to go on from there and um, gives you a few examples of how you can take what they've built and expand upon it a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, this is going to be available on my GitHub. So if I just refresh the page, because I've made it now, there'll be a new repository that you'll have access to when it refreshes. Uh, Blazor tutorial, there you go, and here it is. And after this video, I'll push this so you can get the kind of template code. Now, obviously, that'll be the same as if you made the template yourself. But from this episode, or, well, next episode onwards, uh, any changes I make, I'll put on here so you guys have access to it. In case your code isn't working, you can compare it against mine. It's always best to try and fix the errors yourself, but if you do get stuck, then you can always compare. But anyway, uh, what you want to do is you want to click Get Started. Uh, this is just a quick way to get to this link here, .NET Core 3.0 SDK. Now I'm going to link it below so you guys can just click that. And what it'll do is it'll take you to the downloads for the SDK. Now, this is version 3.0 that was released in September. And on our website, if you've been to our website uh, or not, we're using v, uh, v3.1 preview and I thought it'd make more sense not to use preview versions for the tutorials. So as soon as 3.1 does come out, then we'll, you know, switch over to it for the tutorials. Uh, there are quite a few benefits and features that I like from it. But the problem about using a preview version is that then previews change quite quickly. Um, now, I'm not saying they will change, but they might. Right. But as, uh, once a version has been released and it's out of preview, then it's more stable. You know, we can use that. So for now, V3.0, and what you're going to want to do is you want to go to the SDK here, and you want to go down to whichever your operating system is, and get the installer. So for me, I've done Windows 64-bit. Download that, set it up, and just make sure you have Visual Studio too, um, because that's the uh, editor I'm using, and I'm not sure if you can use this with things other than Visual Studio. I mean, it actually says here it's included in Visual Studio, .NET Core 3.0. Basically, just get yourself set up. I know you guys are capable. If you're not, then this probably isn't the you know series for you. But yeah, I'm going to see you in Visual Studio. Okay, so here I am in Visual Studio, and you're going to want to go ahead and type in Blazor to give you the template. Now, if you don't see this template pop up, what you're going to have to do is go to the Visual Studio installer. You just type in on your search bar, and it comes up with this. Now, I have two versions of Visual Studio installed, but I'm using the non-preview one, so the bottom one. We go to modify and then inside here when it loads it'll show you all the packages you've got installed such as uh, i've got like the unity package and whatever else now the only one you need for this is a uh, this asp.net web development feel free to get any of the things you uh, might want to try out when you're using visual studio but you only need this one for what we're doing so get that install it then you might have to reopen the visual studio window i'm not sure if you do you probably do though um, so go ahead and reopen it type in blazer blazer app next Inside here, we're going to call the project Blazor Tutorial. Try not to have spaces because it can get, give you problems later and it's just fiddly. If you're going to use spaces, use underscores instead, but I just put it all together like Blazor Tutorial. The folder can still be called, you know, with space in between, whatever. And then place in the same, it's fine. Create. And we're going to give that a second to set up. Uh, in a minute, actually, sorry, I forgot there's a bit more configuration. So at the moment, the only supported version is the server app. Now, they will be bringing out a WebAssembly client side version. And if you don't know what that means, feel free to go research it. But we're not going to be covering that now because it's not out for a while. Um, I think it's available in preview now, but we're not worrying about preview versions. We're just going to use the server app. Essentially, it means uh, the code is run on the server rather than the code is dispatched and ran on the uh, client's browser. 
Um, there's different ways to implement this because if you've got logic running on your server, you know it's pretty safe because it's on your side. You don't want to give sensitive information to the clients because they can do stuff with it. So for now, there's less things to worry about with server. It just means um, there's more stress on the server because all the logic for all of the people using your website at the same time is all being run on your end. So, you know, if tons of people using your website, it might be quite stressful for your, you know, um, resources. But eventually when client comes out, when client site comes out and people start moving over to that for large websites, th this is no problem for small websites. Don't worry. Server, server side is good for like hundreds of concurrent users. It's when it gets to thousands, I think it starts becoming a problem. But anyway, that's what you want. Uh, I just did a quick explanation, configure the HTTPS, just leave all this, create. And then it's going to create it. I don't think there's any more uh, setup, so I'm just going to skip ahead until it's open. Never mind, it's it's open pretty quickly. So when it opens, there's quite a lot to take in, and let's get into that now. So over here, you have your solution, which is your kind of like root folder, essentially, because you might want different web projects in one website. You might want uh, different portals. In my in our website, we have. Um, a student portal, which is for all like learning and stuff for the average user, right? Just people who come to our community. And then we have this teacher portal, which is for people who are part of the teacher team, only they can access it and it's got stuff for them. And I, we uh, separate this into different web projects. This is a web project. For now, you know, the template just gives you one and we're gonna stick with one, but it might be sensible at some point to actually make multiple depending on what you're doing or how you know large scale it is. But for now we have one web project and we can actually w run that one re web project. I'm slipping off on my words, I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, if you press this run I IIS Express at the top and you just wait, if there's any pop-up boxes asking you to confirm or agree stuff, just say yes. And then it opens and here we are. So it runs on your local host. Keep in mind, no one else can access your website unless you properly host it. And that's a completely different time for a different video or whatever. Um, it, this is only for you right now. And we have the homepage, we've got a nav bar, we have a counter. If you click the counter, it goes up and it rem remembers that number. Obviously only while you're on the page, if you come back, it resets because you've reloaded the page. And then you press fetch data and it gives you some data from a database, which is all part of their uh, template. Now keep in mind, uh, how fast it is to actually get around. It's using what's called a SPA application and SPA is single page application. When you go to different URLs, it uses some uh, web magic. <laughs> Don't ask me how it works. <laughs> and basically uh, it refreshes, uh, it changes the UI, changes the HTML without actually reloading the page. When you uh, normally go to a different website, it opens either a new tab or the entire page reloads. In this, it just changes the HTML that needs to change which is really cool. This nav bar is just here all the time. Uh, this is open at all points, whereas the page, this changes the HTML. It's really cool. And it means uh, applications are a lot faster and it's just so much better when it comes to like um, building modular websites when you might want to just uh, add the counter to this website. You don't have to code it again. You can just put this counter into a component and you can add it at the bottom here and you can go to your homepage and add it here too. It's all in one place. The code, you want to tweak it in one place, it tweaks it in all. It's really good design. Component-based design is always better than inheritance. Uh, inheritance has its place, but uh, composition is always better when you can. And then it's about nicely takes you to the documentation. Um, that's obviously going to a different website, so it has to load up a new thing, but this uh, is pretty simple and it's pretty cool. So let's look into some of the code. Okay, so I hit the red square here to stop running the website. Equally, you can just close the website and it will stop running it anyway. And over here, let's just look through what we've got. So dependencies, uh, you never have to look in here really. This just stores the different dependencies, right? Because your project might have external libraries and using different uh, packages and things. So it's all in there. You don't have to touch that, it's automatic. Properties are some settings. WWW root is actually just CSS and basically um, it's where you put images and all that lot in there. Now, this is the stuff we actually care about as backend developers. And keep in mind, this is this is actually front and backend. It's full stack development. So we've got data. Now, this is one of the template things. So let's zoom out. It's a, it's a bit huge. Um, this is just a model class. It's just a class that stores data, right? No logic in it. Um, I mean, technically, yeah, there's some logic there to get this value. Um, but imagine you had a database. Um, you'd store date and you'd store temperature and you'd store this summary, which is a string. But you wouldn't store temperature in Fahrenheit because what happens is um, whenever you ask for that, it just calculates it at runtime using the temperature uh, Celsius and doing the conversion. I use Celsius, I'm in England. Uh, I don't know Fahrenheit at all, but clearly that's the uh, conversion for it. So that's just some data. And then we have a service over here and a service is what you use to access the database. Now in this, as far as I'm aware, they don't actually use a database because if you look here, uh, what they do is they just make a new weather forecast uh, 
and then they just randomize some stuff <laughs> basically they just randomize it right whatever um and then they have the array of summaries for what it can be and that's just basically how you get data about the weather forecast all right there's some data stuff then we have pages pages are dot razor files now there's this this hosts thing uh never really mess with that much to be honest uh we don't need to touch that right now anyway we have the counter page so you remember when we ran let's just run it again okay so we run and we go to the counter page and it's quite simple to understand if you think about it so what you've got here is on counter we have i'm going to be tabbing quite a bit here we have counter and here it is a h1 counter that's some html and then at the top we've got an app page which is the um it's the url basically so if you have your local host blah blah, blah slash anything after the uh html sorry the um anything after your website root which for us is the local host uh, so the slash onwards is actually what you put in your code so if someone goes to slash counter right so whatever website slash counter it will load up this page it'll come to here um we could obviously change that to make it be something else but it's slash counter for now and then here we have a h1 counter for the title a p paragraph and now notice how it says current count and then this and it looks a bit odd this at uh, basically um it's actually the blazer logo is an at sign uh, which is kind of cool um normally html is html right uh just words but you might want to put variables in those strings so over here you see we have a zero and we press count with a one and then a two and a three um notice how that one two three is actually this variable here but this variable changes based on the page so what happens is blaze is smart enough to know that when this number changes we just want to change that part of the html it doesn't reload the page when you add one to like show you an updated version it just updates that one bit of html and this is referring to a variable so you see down here we've got int current count um if i was being me i would put a private there whatever it doesn't matter um you can have private variables in the code referenced by the page you don't need to make them public uh now it's gone pink because i've changed it while running it doesn't matter we'll sort that out in a second and then over here you've got a button obviously it's a button that's the thing we click uh this uh, class is to do with the css styling and then we have another thing here at on click and basically if you do at on click it's an event call uh, like a callback but through blazer so you can call code in here right you can call code from here in here function calls right and the function call you just put in by the string name increment count right now that could also be private whatever it, it actually is private if you don't specify i just like <laughs> specifying whether it's private or public um and then we have the button say click me and obviously the button says click me you click it and what does it do well it takes the current count variable and it does plus plus which is an increment it increases it by one and then in the page obviously that variable's gone up so we display it there and that's a really simple example of it right you've got a website where you've got a button and that button changes a number and then if you refresh properly refresh or you go back it obviously resets it because as soon as you go off a page this code is essentially lost if you wanted to actually for example store what counts you're on you'd have to use a database right for persistent data storage so that could be one thing we want to do right feel free to suggest down below what ideas you want because i don't actually i've not spent time thinking about what i want to do yet for the uh for the series i'm going to think about that over the next few days and also look at the description i mean not the description sorry the comments um i think one cool way to introduce you to a database would be to have a simple uh database that stores basically like an app user id which would be referring to you your logged in user when i have to would have to obviously make an account um so that you could store it to your name and then or, well to your id and then in the what the database we could have a column storing your increment count and what happens is um as you add to it we could either update the database every time you add or you could make it so that when you leave the page um it also saves instead but to be honest oh yeah you could add and then you could have a save button and save button will save it to the database that probably makes more sense because then um otherwise what happens is you don't want to have to make like a database request every single time you spam click because that would be stupid you only want to do it when you have to um so we'll think about that and we'll, we'll probably do that to show you how to use databases to read and write so then what we can do is we can close the website project reopen it go back to the page and load up my uh, account and then we might even have like a reset button that uh resets it and then it saves that or whatever right it'd be pretty cool but yeah that's the page for the counter and let's go and have a quick look at the page for the um fetch data so the fetch data page because obviously the home page is just some text it's simple this is a bit more complicated than home this is even more complicated uh but it's not too bad really so what they've done is if we open solution explorer and go down to the uh, error so yeah error is um obviously if you go to slash error it shows you this and what you can do is if you get an error you can redirect them to slash error 
Um, you can also, I think, use that somewhere else. Uh, is it in here? I honestly can't remember. Um, there is somewhere you can set it, so like you have a default page to go to when there is an error. But regardless, we want to go to fetch data. Now, obviously, that's slash fetch data, the website we're looking at. It's using this namespace. So just like when you're using C Sharp normally, you have namespaces you have to import. You do that. You just put an at before it. You have to at before any C Sharp code, basically. And then you have to at inject the service so that um, essentially on startup of your project, the startup class will, um, if I find it here and zoom out, there is somewhere. Here we go services.addsingleton weather forecast service. So what it does is it basically says anyone who injects a weather forecast service, we give them an instance of it. And that instance is always the same. So no matter which page needs it, it's giving them the exact same instance. So if you had like um, a field in there that I changed to the number five, it would be five for all of them. Um, so that's how that works. And we get that, sorry, over in fetch data. So now we can refer to forecast service in our code. So obviously we have a H1, title, paragraph. Then we have some logic here, right? We say, if forecasts is null, have this shown, some HTML for loading, else do a table. So all it's saying is basically, um, we don't want to show the table until we've loaded the forecasts to display in the table, because you'll get some problems saying forecast is null. But it can't be null if you've done the check here. So this is always going to work, right? Forecast will never be null here because if it's null, it doesn't get rendered or even like ran at all. And what this means is whenever forecasts, whenever the list changes, this is smart, smart enough to know forecast change, we need to re-render this part. So it'll do this logic again, or maybe even all this. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but that's kind of how it works. And what it does here is we loop over all forecasts in the array. All we do here is we just get the forecasts right from the array. Um, and we just write how we want to display it. So we should display the day and the temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit, summary. Um, and we do it for each, we loop, right? And then over here, we've got the headers. So if we go back, you'll notice uh, over here, we've got the headers, sorry, the headers here. And then we've looped and we've added another and another and another and another, and we could loop and keep going. So if you had a massive list of data, you could just display it in a table like that. And that's basically it, right? That's, that's quite simple. We just store a private array of forecasts and we set the forecast when, when it's here because we don't set it equal to anything initially it's null which means it says loading until it's loaded so that's really cool now i think it's so fast that we never even see it saying loading it's it's so fast right like you don't even i can't get there fast enough for it to you know because normally in a database it'll take time but this is well, obviously it still takes time but it's so quick because it's not actually using a database it's just using like just this file here to be honest and just calling this really quick function so that's why we never get to see loading, but let's just say um, I go back to the page for the fetch and I just comment this out and I never actually set forecasts. Then if I run the project again, we'll go see and it'll just say loading because forecasts is null and it stays null. Um, just says loading, right? And obviously if we comment it out and then run again, then it'll work. But anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. I wanted to keep it kind of short, not too long. I just want to show you the code and how it works. Get your mind, uh, get your mind around it. Yeah, whatever. Wrap your head around it. Um, let me know down below what you guys want to see us do. Keep in mind, I want to keep it kind of simple at the start and work up in complexity. We don't want to jump into something too complex right at the start. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions, ask below. Join our Discord server. Ask in there. We'd love to help. But we're currently using Blazor and we're relatively new to it. You know, we've only been using it for like a few months. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of like tips and tricks to show you when we get into more complex examples and just the way we do things. And obviously, if people know better ways to do things, then let us know, sure. Uh, and obviously, I can cover them in the video. GitHub links down below. I've said everything. Help support the channel if you can. It'd be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if that's all you can do. Sure, that'd be like greatly appreciated as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.